John believes the Pentagon tests of his anti-gravity effect may have ended up at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, home to secret U.S. military projects, including new types of super aircraft and top secret or black ops propulsion systems. Stranger still, Nick Cook, a writer for the respected British military journal Jane's Defense Weekly, found out about John Hutchison's work through one of Lockheed Martin's top scientists. So I was at Lockheed Martin, I was with Boyd Bushman, a senior engineer there, and he showed me a film that purported to show some of John Hutchison's levitation experiments. What we saw was a saw, some nails, a hammer, you know, household stuff. Most of them were shooting off the top of the screen. It was almost like an impulse reaction. Normally, I would have kind of looked at this stuff and just thought it's somebody idea, somebody's idea of a practical joke. But the fact that it was being highlighted to me by somebody, of, somebody from Lockheed Martin as something I should be paying attention to kind of got my attention. And that was what really convinced me to go and at least have a look at what John, John Hutchison was doing. I'm 99% convinced that this is not a hoax. I don't think anyone knows what is going on here, but too many people have looked into it, too many people have investigated, you know, people who have my respect for me to think that it's a hoax. Eventually, Lockheed Martin would send their own team to conduct tests. But John hasn't heard much since, and he worries about his technology being used for military purposes. Like Galileo in his time, who was imprisoned for looking too closely at stars, John and his technology have been stopped cold, shunned by mainstream science. Frustrated by his inability to bring this anti-gravity technology to the world, John spends his days gathering more Navy surplus gear for his much smaller apartment-based lab. Oh, cool. Better try it to make sure it works. It looks kind of great. It looks cool. For those prone to claustrophobia, John's home is not the place to stay for drinks and a game of cards. Living here in this space is like living inside a very cramped submarine. My girlfriends find this rather interesting and quite different. And actually, I had some girlfriends stay overnight. They didn't seem to mind it. It hasn't got the best of things for feminine amenities, but they managed to tough it out, let's say. This is the shower box, I call it. Renamed the shower box. So when I come in here and after I get out of bed, I pull up my trusty navy colored box, which contains all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff for growing hair and creams and stuff and shaving equipment. Then I proceed to crawl into the little box there and start cupping myself with a cup of water and shave and all that. So I go into that routine and then think of what I'll be doing for the day. So what I have is this thing is on a string. It's a toy UFO. I'm going to suspend it uh, from a string off the floor, firing energy fields at it and see if I can get it to even move. Working on his effects research, John sees himself as more of an artist than scientist. Turning and twisting knobs like a painter. Dipping into electrical fields to access a random force field. But in this small lab, it's even less predictable than before. The saucer is moving and changing direction, but there might be other forces at work here. Colonel Alexander, who trained people in the U.S. Army Intelligence Service to bend metal using their minds, believes that John could be inadvertently creating the Hutchison effect through his own PK, or psychokinetic powers. One of the possibilities is that the electronic fields were actually amplifying some sort of PK experience that he was having or causing to happen. It is not uncommon, if you study the whole field of poltergeist phenomena, that strange macro PK events occur and yet seem to be beyond the control of the individual who is causing it to happen. 
An example of this kind of random event happened in 1989 when a visiting Vancouver news crew was setting up at John's lab to film the Hutchison effect. The target area was that yellow crate with the metal objects. But to everyone's shock, a sponge in the back of the room took off into the air and then fell back down. John didn't actually see it and was genuinely surprised. Like that. It went up and hit the ceiling one second, maybe two seconds, and then came down. Kind of kidding. No. Well, some time ago, I was doing some testing and got into some big trouble after I levitated a toy UFO and some other objects. Apparently, John's experiments were lifting objects in nearby homes, and the neighbors called the police. The police came full bore in here with engineers, inspectors. They photographed all the equipments very carefully. It's almost like if you called in a cleaning, cleaning crew. They didn't touch anything. It's like they made everything look neater for some strange reason. It seems like someone in the shadows still cares what our hero is up to. Frustrated by authorities and lack of recognition, John has been spending time developing his new project, batteries that last forever, based on the somewhat bizarre zero-point energy theory. Followers of this theory believe that all physical matter floats in a sea of energy, which, if collected and converted into electrical power, could more than meet all the world's demand for energy. I feel everything has a life force to it, because I tend to visualize that atoms are a whole universe, and when they're combining one atom to make millions, if not trillions of them, you have a piece of metal, perhaps. Every time you run your hand across a piece of metal, you're taking off several million atoms at a time. To demonstrate how energy is everywhere, John uses rocks from his neighborhood and in two hours makes a zero-point battery strong enough to power a pen light. I make sure it bonds. Almost one half electron volt. This is better than a conventional battery simply because it never runs down. So with these things, they could last approximately as long as minerals last, up to maybe a thousand years, unknown. Realizing his batteries could help solve the world's energy crisis, the Japanese have embraced John and funded him to build his bigger crystal-based models. I got orders from Japan and sponsorship for me to make more of them. So the money would come through into my bank account, and indeed I made units that are actually in Hiroshima City. While various zero-point energy devices were funded by the Japanese, so far, none have taken off on a mass scale. Whether building batteries or levitating objects, John Hutchison is an eccentric enigma. Of course, virtually no mainstream scientists take John or his invention seriously. But then, only a little over a hundred years ago, people believed it was impossible to send a radio wave across the Atlantic. Now just imagine if this backyard scientist really has discovered a primal force of nature that could transform our world. I am only taken seriously by the military scientists. The academic scientists really don't know what to make of me. Well, to say a lot of other people too don't know what to make of me. I'm just a different person and I'm kind of happy with myself. I don't want to try and change myself. <laughs>